show. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Thurman's Bison. Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna head over to the Ponderosa. Gonna put out a bale of hay to the yearlings and then I'm gonna give them a little bit of feed. Uh, see how they're doing. We're gonna go visit Big Joe. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of things and then Cole and I are gonna go play in the creek a little bit. We're gonna try something new. Don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna try it. You guys follow us along. Hope you enjoy it. So what we're gonna do next, Cole and Maya and I, we are uh, gonna go down in the pasture. We're gonna do a couple different things. One, we're gonna do a water test. Uh, we've got a generator here. Found an old water pump. It's an old Sears water pump here uh, that the previous owner left. And uh, left two of them actually. And uh, I saw them before we even got the property and he said I could have them. Didn't know what the heck I could do with them. Figured it up, did some wiring. Anyways, we got two water pumps. We got one we're gonna take take down and see if we can get some water out of the creek. Uh, we're gonna see if these old pumps actually work. So we've got Daniel's welder, the generator. We're gonna take it down there. I did a little rigging with some wiring. Don't know what I'm doing all the time, but so far we did a little test and it actually runs. So we're gonna actually go see if it will pull water out of the creek. Um, and then we'll explain to you why we're doing that once we get down there. We are at the uh, Oklahoma Pride Feed Bunk and um, brought this up in my last video. We ran out of feed. I'm, I've got a bag of feed. I'm gonna get them going, but I had to clean out some of it because it gets trapped in the bottom of this bunk. So um, I brought a bag of feed out here because I haven't scheduled to get some feed delivered yet. So we'll uh, we'll feed them this way. And we'll get them, keep them happy. a little bit so some of this just we've been doing this all summer for these yearlings mainly just because we've got big joe and them out there on more grass just because i trust them with new fencing but we're about to rotate them here soon but with no regrowth of grass and stuff we've had to supplement the yearlings all summer because of the drought so nothing new but just having to uh, 
try to keep them as healthy as possible and they still look good uh, with the conditions and then we also are going to put out a bale of hay today which is not fun in the middle of summer well actually at the end of summer it's not what you want to be doing it's not what you want to be doing but it's pretty it's fun putting out a bale of hay hey, pretty fun what? to watch yeah it's fun for me yeah and y'all i need a ring you guys know any good bison hay holders hay rings let me know something that's dunbar proof So we're uh, we're just headed west right now. This is the last part of the fence that we just finished here a month or so ago, and so far it's still doing good. And this is a 40-acre pasture that they've been in. Big Joe Herd has been in. So you've only got nine adults, um, and then you got two calves. But it's holding up. But oh, you know, here they are right here. doing good but they they uh the only thing about this pasture is uh they do not like the tall grass um they always like the short stuff but there is lots of grass in here um when they eat it they're nitpicky with it but eventually we may do a fire out here or something like that um, if we can get them rotated further back um, and once we're able to do that these pastures one two three and four will have some rest and so that's the plan is to keep building fence but it's all part of uh, project 189 to keep going uh, to get the rest of our property fence and that, that will take probably another uh, six months or two a year to do and, but in the meantime we'll just uh, do our best to keep managing and manage the land as well keep after it but when you don't get any rain you don't have a lot of help Jump out. Not today. So this is, uh, this is that sludge that uh, the excavator pulled up out of the pond right here behind me. And this is what was kind of slowly creeping down this hill. Like, it reminded me of lava. And it still looks like lava now that it's all cracked up and, and dark like that. And some of this mud down here uh, below is, is, uh, is still kind of wet a little bit. It's damp. But... Uh, yeah, this stuff was kind of creepy looking as it came down the hill. Now, there's still a bunch of dirt left, uh, a bunch of soil left that is up above on the dam or kind of scattered or piled up uh, on the side of the pond. And we still need to bring some of it back here behind the dam so that when it does rain and we get a lot of rain, we don't want the, all that mud and that silt to come right back to the pond. So we got to get it out of the watershed way and put it back here behind the dam or use it somewhere else maybe um, where we need some soil stacked up. But uh, yeah, this was pretty neat to watch it kind of slowly move. And this was like the, this was like in the heart of, or, you know, right in the core of this pond and he got a lot of it out. So glad he did it. Good to have it out of the pond for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Did somebody bring an extension cord? Just kidding. Yeah, it looks good. It's 
a pretty creek, isn't it? It's moving. But yeah, right over there is a good spot. We got to drop this off here and go get a hose. That's a, that's a heavy sucker. I don't even know where it needs to be or anything. Oh, it's heavy. I'll we'll do that later. But we can get one of them pipes, run out of there, see if it sucks it up. It's kind of a pretty good incline. That'd have been better out there. Problem is, is can it pump it over? Uh, so what's the point? Why do we have a generator down here? Why do we have a water pump down here? Here's a perfect example. This is the reason. And so like I've talked about, this is what I call the halfway nine acres. It's just a nine acre lot. It's not very big. It has this big, pretty, what was a big, pretty pond. And Richard's going to come and build this uh, about a thousand foot of fence um, for this nine acres. And once that's built, here's the problem of rotating Big Joe and them, which are right there. Over here is Here's their water source. And I know when you look at this, you're going, Dusty, they cannot drink that. Absolutely, you are correct. I don't want them drinking this. So Cole and I are out here, and what we're gonna do is just see if this water pump that was left actually can pull water out of this creek. I've gotta do a little research. I gotta call the extension office to figure out about getting a water permit just to fill up a water tank uh, from the creek because the creek is uh, about 250 feet from this pond or uh, 300 feet, let me correct myself, 300 feet from this pond. But I don't want them drinking that water. This is how it's looked after, I guess, a month or so now uh, since they dug it out. And we haven't had any rain, really any true rain since then. And so the water has receded a whole bunch. Um, you could see the middle part where he couldn't reach with the excavator. But I've got to come back through now with my skid steer and I'm going to try to get all the excess dirt I can out of it and get it out of here, dump it behind the dam, build it up some. But in all of this, I need to get it out of here before we do get those hard rains. Whenever that happens, I don't want a lot of this dirt to come back in here. So since I have the skid steer, I can come get some of this stuff out um, while it's so dry like this. Now, I can't go out in the middle. I know right now it looks like it's probably solid but I'm not getting, I'm not gonna risk my skid steer getting stuck out there in the middle of that. Uh, but this pond is so much deeper than it was. We'll see if we get the rain to fill it back up. I don't know, this, let mother nature take its course. But in the meantime, I need to get some dirt out and throw it behind the dam. So I don't want them drinking this. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna see if this good old fashioned Sears pump, there's a great blue heron coming in. Ah, he's coming in. Coming to steal some fish, if there's any left. <sighs> yeah, because I doubt there's anything left in there. If it, if it ain't him, it's the raccoons that have probably got all the fish or whatever's left in there. But uh, we're gonna take this Sears Deluxe water pump. I don't even know how old it is. It looks like it's from the 70s. And we're gonna see if we can get some water out of the creek, just to see if it works. Let's go try it. So there's an old homestead right here. Um, so we're, we're in the back of the property. We haven't showed you a lot of that because we'll eventually get here. We got a little ways to go. But uh, this piping was here and actually most of us piled up, but I scooped some of it out with the skid steer. Um, it looks like what they tried to do, I think they tried to uh, get water out of it at some point with, with all this. So um, 
we're going to take some of this and repurpose it and use it on the pump. So I'm here trying to find the right size. We need inch and a quarter, which I think, which is what most of this piping is. It's in still in pretty good shape. And we just need it to be pumped. So we're gonna use this for the uh, inlet. We're gonna have a, a regular hose for the outlet. Limb loppers. Make it work. Oh, that's plenty long. Yeah. Will it pump out of the water? Or will it pump up the hill? That's the question. At least it's an inch and a quarter. Right? It's the right size. That's why I brought the coupling, just to well, make took, sure. That's why you took that thumb picture. You got to get your little measurement. Is yes. that about an inch and a quarter? Perfect. I'll show you that picture, guys. Just get her done. <laughs> now here's the fun part. It's carrying this bad boy. Well, and that's one way to haul 20 feet of tubing. <laughs> We're going to make it work. That's just ranching it, <laughs> for real. We don't have far to go. I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, let me flip sides. That end is better. Oh, there's a snake. I'd have walked right down in there. Moccasin? Where at? Oh, I see him. Hopefully, just a water snake. I didn't glue it, it's just a test. We'll see how it goes. I mean, get it down here, away from the snakes. I propped it out. Can you step on it cold, maybe? In the water, plug this in. It's not a lot of water, but it's water. Round two, try to. It's pumping it out, but we can't get it in. I don't think it's pumping out of there. All right, so we've got, what I did was uh, we put some primer, we, we primed it up before we left just to see if the motor would actually come on. I don't know if this has ever been ran before. Like I said, we had two of them that was left here at the property and uh, they looked like they'd never been used. And so um, I wired it um, with a three prong cord for 120 volts and the electrical side of it came on, which was good. 
But I'll also say something else. I don't know anything about water pumps. Never messed with a water pump before. Talked to people about them. I, I had a question. I was concerned if this half a horsepower could even get up this hill. Now, for me, to the water, it's probably a six-foot drop, five, five to six-foot drop. So we may have to put this closer to the water um, and get this level where the actual water can be pumped up into it. This little half horse may not can do it. So I may need to get it lower to the water, which means we'll need an extension cord. So learning here and just trying, but we had some concerns because we still have to go way up the hill. And I don't know if this, what looks heavy uh, and is solid and is heavy can actually pump that far up there. So we'll keep trying, but it fired up and it shot out, which was a good sign that my electrical worked. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get some water out of the creek. This is a uh, to be continued project with the uh, old Sears water pump. We, uh, I think we're gonna try a couple of different things. So uh, take it easy on us guys. But um, we'll, uh, if you have any advice on these pumps, uh, I've already talked to a couple people, Ed Kirkpatrick, a friend of ours, um, and he gave me some good advice. I just want to see if this pump would actually work. That was all I, was, I want to see it work. And it's pretty cool when you have something old like this, it's never been touched and my wiring actually worked um, to see if, if, if it actually works, which is fun. So this is another one of those spots you like. Makes you pretty humble. It's a good spot to be in. Have a running creek year round running rock bottom creek rock bottom in the middle of a drought brooks loves it so does maya so the snakes and the snakes unfortunately but bison will love it eventually neighbors horses love it saw them in it but no it is a blessing to have this right here and just sit here and listen to it you don't get this very often Less to have it. All right, so I've had some people ask me about why don't we stack our hay bales on top of each other? You know, in some places you can do that. I would love to get a big tarp and put over uh, all this hay, like, a, like an old advertisement um, billboard or something. I know you can get those, but I'd love to just cover all these up. That would be awesome. Um, but uh, one of the reasons that we don't stack up hay here, and this is just what we do, Kevin and I don't do that, is because if you stack uh, some of these bales on top of each other um, and then you get moisture, uh, the bales get soggy and wet, obviously, which is fine. But when you set them on top of the other, that moisture sets in the bottom of this bale that's on top and then it molds the top of this one. And so you actually ruin some of your hay after it sets there for several months if you're getting lots lots of moisture now we haven't been getting any moisture and i don't know when we are but that's just something that we do it does take up a lot more space which is okay that's fine we've got space to store hay away from the bison but in the meantime that's why we don't stack the bales of hay is because of the moisture problem and then it causes mold which eventually ruins your hay it's okay on the bottom and actually a little bit of the bottom will get like that if we have a lot of moisture on the winter. But uh, as soon as you rip that outside layer off, it goes away. What the, the bison are great about doing is any of that stuff that's a little crusty or, or maybe a little moldy or ruined hay, they'll knock that off and get to the core of this, which on the inside is really good. Don't, don't judge the outside of it. This is good hay. But as soon as you take that little outside layer off that looks a little dark on these uh, bells, uh, the good stuff's right there. So the other good thing is we are getting ready to start setting up our handling system. Here in about a month, we're gonna work the bison here at the Ponderosa. And so that is getting exciting. We're getting closer to that as well. You guys can also check out our Clips channel at Cross Timbers Bison Clips. You can check that channel out and you may see some behind the scenes footage of kind of what goes on when Cole's around and he's filming 
and uh, we're working on some stuff that you may not see normally. You can check it out on our Clips channel. Don't forget to check out some of our new shirts, our new merch, and uh, some new flavor of uh, snack sticks that we have all at our website at crosstimersbison.com. I want to thank Cole for his help. It's fun to work with Cole, and uh, it's uh, nice to have somebody out here. So we really enjoy working together. Uh, he's making, he's doing a good job, and he's hustling around filming for me and all that stuff. So thank you guys for being a part of this, and uh, we'll see you soon.